Hi everybody, it's Patty, Rockstar Mom. Welcome to my channel and welcome to what I think is going to be a really fun video today. And one of the things I think that's going to make it fun is I'm going to ask you for suggestions. I'm going to ask you for your ideas. I'm sure that what I'm going to talk about are things that I do uh, and most of them I've done for a long time, although I'm still learning. But I know that many of you have so many suggestions and ideas and tips and tricks that you use or that you know about that all of us can benefit from. So I'm going to ask you at some point during this video, just hit that pause button and go down and leave a comment with an idea. And if you have to pause it a little bit later and leave another one, do that too. Leave as many as you want to. And just don't forget to hit the send button after you leave a comment or the comment button after you leave the comment. But I think this will be fun because we we really do learn from each other. Oh, it's hard to resist Feeling like one of a kind Oh, now the hearts are so As you saw, the title of this video was basically Makeup Tips from a 78-Year-Old for Older Women. And not just makeup, but also we're going to throw a couple of things in there like bras. Oh yeah, how we look in our clothes. What we can do maybe. Just a couple of little tweaks that we can do to help us look better in whatever style of clothing we're wearing. All right? Don't forget, I want your comments. I have to start off this video with a story about my mother. And I'm going to insert a picture of her. And this was made when my mother was in her 70s. Probably about 75. And my mother wore this same hairstyle or something almost identical to it for as long as I could remember. A little short hairstyle. She always colored her hair. It was bleached. Her hair was sort of the same mousy brown mine is. So she did bleach her hair up until her final days. And it was always such a cute hairstyle on her. She did her hair every single morning when she did her makeup. And I know I've told you that uh, my mother reminded me of that episode that Oprah did many, many, many years ago when she had her daily talk show. And one of those shows, it was called Being As Cute As You Can Be. And I remember it because Throughout that whole show, all I could think about was my mother. That's who my mother was. Every day, my mother got up, she put her makeup on, she, well, she took her shower, washed her hair, did her hair, put her makeup on. She dressed every single day. She dressed for the day. As a friend of mine says, she dressed out for every game because she never knew when she was going to be called on to play. But she was always cute. She did a really good job with her makeup. And personally, I think my mother was a very pretty woman. So my stepfather had died. And it had been a few months. And I went to visit her. I had to drive from Little Rock to Memphis. She lived in Memphis. I had to drive from Little Rock to Memphis to, to see her, to visit her for the weekend. And I got there and everything is just as normal as it can be. And, and listen, I need to go back and tell you that my mother dressed if she never went out of the house. Her hair was done. Her makeup was done. What she had on. If she never stepped foot out of the house, she was put together. Her jewelry. So I get there on a Friday afternoon late, 
and we get up the next morning and uh, of course she's back in her bedroom and bathroom getting dressed. I had already finished and I'm sitting in a chair in the den and all of a sudden she walks in. And when I tell you I did a double take, I did a double take. I almost did not recognize my mother. I, I sat there and I was trying to keep, oh, there were two things going on with me. Number one, I was trying to keep a straight face. I was trying so hard not to laugh. My mother, now you saw her the length of her hair. She had her hair parted straight down the middle, very severe, and it was literally glued with hairspray or gel or I don't know what coming straight down all the way around. It's parted in the middle just like this. But then she had on very heavy makeup, very thick, and she had on eyeliner like I've never seen her wear. Her eyes were rimmed really wide all the way around and it was black and she had on bright blue eyeshadow. Lots of blush. I think she had on red lipstick. Her clothing was fine but I sat there and it was like I knew I had to say something but I didn't know what to say. So I think I said something like well, you changed your look today, trying to keep a straight face. I mean, that whole time I'm trying to think about what I can say to her. I knew that she did this on purpose, and I knew that she was expecting a response from me. So I, that's, why I, that's the only thing I could come out with was, well, it looks like you've tried something new today. And I smiled real big and and uh, she said, yeah, I thought I'd try something different. I said, cool, and I'm secretly thinking, oh, God, please, please, please don't let her want to go out in public. Please, please, I hope she doesn't want to go to the mall. Now, that's, some of you are probably going to say that's horrible. And, but it wasn't because I didn't want my mother to go out like that. That's not who she was. And I think it was fine that she wanted to do that that day. I never saw her do it again. But everything about it was so severe. You know, had she parted her hair in the middle and done some kind of a little flip, I think that would have been cute. Had she taken it a little bit easy, or on the foundation and the eyeliner, uh, maybe a little heavier than what she normally did, but not quite this heavy. So that's something since then that I've never forgotten. And I think about it a lot when I'm getting dressed. That's sort of the measure that I use when I'm getting myself ready in, in the morning. And listen, I don't do, I'm reaching for my iPad, I don't do everything my mother did. Trust me, I don't. I don't get up and shower first thing and wash my hair every day and go through all that. I don't. Most mornings I get up and pull my hair back off of my face and piddle for a while. Decide what I'm going to do and then dress appropriately. I just shake my head every time I think about it. I think, here, here's the deal, <laughs> I think for any of you who want that look, Listen, that's fine. And it was fine for my mother. And, and guess what? Had my mother wanted to go to the mall that day, I would have gone to the mall with her. Just like that. And we would have strutted our stuff through that mall and we would have had a ball. But I think she was just trying out something new. We're going to talk first about how we look in our clothes. And I... I've had 
a question, at, the same question asked many, many times in comments uh, before for years, and I've never really responded to it because I think that, uh, number one, it's sort of personal, and number two, I think that uh, you never know when someone who is asking that question, if they're male, if they're female, if they're sort of, mm, maybe, maybe it's a trick question, or maybe I'm being deceived into going off in an area that I don't want to go in. But I decided to go ahead today and talk about this just a, just a little bit because I saw someone out in the store the other day and it reminded me of this. But it's about bras and it's about shapewear. So a lot of you over the years have asked me what kind of bras I wear. And I tell you, I think bras are so personal and shapewear is so personal. And yes, I do wear shapewear, and let's talk about that just a little bit. Uh, I am older, and I am a curvier and a little heavier than I used to be. But even when I was much thinner, I wore shapewear. Because even when you're thin, you can have lumps and bumps. And if you're wearing something that sort of hugs your body, it's nice not to have the bumps and the ridges and the panty lines. And so I, for many, many years, wore a one-piece built-in bra and shapewear that the bottoms were made sort of like panties. And there are so many brands of those out there. And for me personally, uh, it was a, a, just a trial period in finding something that really worked for me that was comfortable. I'm very large chested, so it had to fit me uh, in my bust, but it also had to fit <clears throat> in length and, and you know, uh, all around. And, it ha and as I said, it had to be comfortable. I had three different colors. I had a nude one, I had a white one, and I had a black one. And I, I got so used to wearing those every day that they were just like second nature. It was like wearing a bathing suit. It was like wearing a one-piece bathing suit. Never uncomfortable, unless it doesn't fit, and then it would be uncomfortable. But they they should have just enough support so that it smooths you out, because that's, it, they, you know, they advertise you can be a size smaller, two size smaller, look 10 pounds, thinner. That's not what I was going for, ever. I was going for a smooth look with my clothes. And I was able to achieve that. I was in the workplace and it was important for me in my job to look as professional as I could. And having lumps and bumps was not very professional, at least for me. So that worked for me. So if you're still out there like that, or if you're wearing clothes that fit more snug or close to your body, look at some good shapewear. I think you'll be surprised at what's out there. And you may have to try a few things before you find something that really works for you. The next thing is bras. And as I said, from the time I stopped wearing those, I was always on the hunt for a bra that I could just love, a bra that would fit me, you know, a bra that gave me support. And I finally came across these, and I've been wearing these for the last few years, and I really do like them. They're very uh, easily accessible. I buy these off of HSN. They are Rhonda Shear, and Many of you, I'm sure, are familiar with her if you watch H if you watch HSN, and I think many of you probably already wear these. Let me know if you do, or let us know if you do, and what you think about them. I will tell you that it was a little trial and error for me in the beginning with them. Uh, the first one that I bought from her was called, an, and again, if you've probably heard of it, the Abra, the A A. H H whatever it is bra and it's a bra that's made on that machine it's knitted and you you can either step into it or you can pull it over your head I like to step into mine they're much much easier and I'll show you what they look like this is 
two of them and and not too long ago I ordered new sets and and usually these come in sets of three I think and you can get different color combinations but let's the blue one might show up a little bit better but this is what it looks like and the only size that you need for these are as she says your top size whatever size top you wear is what size I'll bra you wear and I wear the large I've started off with the extra large and listen these have can you see this so much give and the cups again have so much give and yet if you're fitted right in it if it's your size they're very accommodating to your body shape and your size and so I have several of these in different colors. These are the two that I brought in. And I wear these most days, just around the house. You can sleep in these. They're so comfortable, you can sleep in them. Uh, I love them. I absolutely love them. She has many styles now of the eyebrows. No boning whatsoever. I love these. As I said, I thought originally when I first started wearing them, I thought that I would wear an extra large. That's what I ordered. And I found out it was too large for me. Of course, at HSN, you have 30 days to return things. So I had a chance to wear it and see how I liked it. And as I said, it was too big. I think that was, uh, it was just fit me too. It, it wasn't snug enough to give me the support I wanted. So I sent them back went down to the large and those were fine. Since then, uh, she has come out with a bra that is, let me look and see what this is. This is 90% micro polyester and 10% spandex. And, and this is the same bra, except it's not knit, but it stretches. Again, you order this according to your top size. Well, I already knew I was a large, and a large works for me in this. I just think these are so pretty. They've got the lace. They've got a lace back. Step, I step into them. You can put them over your head. It's much easier for me to step into them. I think if you're, you know, have mobility issues, you can sit in a chair. You can sit on the side of your bed and just step into it to put it on but I think they're just really pretty and as I said they're very very comfortable they do have they come with uh, pads that can be removed there's a little slit right here on the inside so that you can remove those pads if you don't need them I take them out immediately I don't need them but if you've had a mastectomy or uh, anything like that uh, you know you can add more pads there's certainly room in there. But, and, and I believe they've started making this knit abra with uh, an insert with a pad. You can order it that way. Again, I would never order it that way because I don't need it. But uh, Rhonda Shear does not know me. I paid for these with my own money, but I've been wearing these for years. I've probably been wearing these for seven or eight years maybe and I just keep ordering them and ordering them. Uh, I don't think they're really any more expensive than what you can buy at JCPenney or Dillard's or, or Walmart even for that matter. So if you're looking for a bra that is, I think, very, very comfortable, you might want to look at those or at least try them. The other thing with your bra, and if you haven't heard this, I've heard this several times, over the years and it's something that I look for when I have a bra on. And I'm gonna stand up, you probably won't see my head, well maybe you will, but let me, let me, uh... okay, uh, that's pretty good. Here's my, uh, you can hold your arms down to your side and your bra or your boobs, <laughs> your breast should be right in the middle of your elbow and your shoulder. That's, that's the best look. It's a more youthful look. Is if your breast line, your bra there, 
where your breasts are the fullest in your bra come halfway between your shoulder and your elbow. And that stripe across my shirt is sort of crooked. <laughs> but, or my camera may be crooked. But that is a much more youthful look. So that is my first tip. If you wear a bra that, or shapewear that you absolutely love that works real well for you, it would be good to leave that in a comment under this video. Let us know basically your size or, you know, are you like me? Are you, are you busty uh, or are you not? Uh, are you sort of flat chested? What works for you? What gives you the support and helps you to look better in your clothes? Which bra? And just share that with us if you will. For any of you who have watched me for very long at all, you've seen this next makeup trick. And I started doing this, oh, probably when I was in my early 20s. I don't know, I probably read this in Cosmopolitan, truth be known, I don't remember. But I started doing this and I've never not done it. I do it with every single tube of mascara. And I know some of you are going to say, oh, so-and-so so -and -so already, you can buy it already like that. There are a few brands who do this, and yes, you can. But what I do means that pretty much every single brand of mascara you can do this with, and that is bending the mascara wand. You see how it's bent? Put it right there. Here's, and here, let me show you first of all how you do it and then I'll tell you the benefits of it. I think I have only come across one brand of mascara in all these years that had a wand that would not bend. Or I thought I would break it if I bent it. And I have actually, I think two other tubes of mascara in all this time have I actually broken the wand because I was too aggressive. But here's how I do it. Okay, you pull it out until just, until the brush is right up in this part here. You can see it, you can feel it. And then just very gently bend it downward like that. Now, why would you do that? Okay, whether you're right-handed or left-handed, here you go. You're out here and you've got your arm up and your elbow up and you're making crazy faces and you're trying to get up there and get those eyelashes. And, and if you're right-handed, that is all well and good. Or if you're left-handed, that is all well and good when you're on your left eye. But what happens when you go to do the other eye? Well, you've got to try to change hands or you've got to do all of this or however. Well, with this, it's bent, that brush is right where it needs to be, and you can really work your lashes, but then you can also go right over to your other eye, just like this, or you can turn it like this, and you're not having to have your elbows and arms flying in the air. I have so much more control with this, and like I said, I have been doing this since I was in my early 20s. I know, and y'all know I love me some Wayne Goss now. Oh, I love Wayne Goss. And that was so funny because early on, Wayne Goss talked about that tip. And I thought, when he showed it, I thought, well, I've been doing that since I was a little girl, a young woman, really. But it works, try it. Don't be too aggressive with it when you're bending it. And also, I think something that I like about doing that is it gets mascara off of the sides of the inside of the tube so you can get more mascara out of there, if that makes any sense. But it works, it really works. Something that I know, uh, especially when we buy drugstore foundations, uh, it's unless we already know, we've purchased that before and we already know what shade we wear, it's sometimes pretty difficult to find a shade that is right for us. 
And something I learned a long time ago was to buy, if I was unsure about a shade, to go a little bit lighter than what I thought I would need. And then I can darken it up once I have it on. And to darken it up, I can use a some creams or a darker foundation maybe on top of it just where I need it or and I have this because I have used the heck out of this uh, and it doesn't matter there's several brands out there but this is the elf contour palette and you can see I have used it mainly this one a whole lot of this one <laughs> but you can lighten just very lightly just very lightly with a brush, you can darken up your foundation where you need it. You may not need it all over your face. For me personally, I like to keep the center of my face lighter and the outside of my face darker. I have a square face shape, so I can darken all of this out here and leave this lighter so that lighter color foundation really works for me many times and with something like this where you can get different colors you can really change the shade or the the darkness especially of your foundation and another little tip while we're there is for those of us who are aging especially and by the way they make creams that you can do this with but something else as as we're aging, we start, many of us, probably most of us at some point, are going to start to get the jowls right here, the little droopies right here, right here. Oh, it's where our face is starting to sag. So here's something that I do, and you've probably heard this with other content creators who here on YouTube who do makeup. Anytime you put something light on your face, a light color, it's going to bring it forward. If you put something darker on your face, it's going to pull it in, make it sort of disappear. So what I do is, like on this one, I'll just sort of go across those two, and then I will, ver I'm looking in my viewfinder, I will barely touch right here and also I go because I have the old double triple chin I will do under my chin my jawline right there not too much <clears throat> And if my foundation was too dark, I can go with one of these lighter shades and just lighten through here. And then normally what I do, let me put this up. I keep reaching back to grab these things. I take a great big fluffy brush when I'm through and I go, especially where I've done any of that contouring or the dark or the light and really make sure everything is blended out so that there are no harsh lines, especially this. That's one of my fears is that I'm gonna go out of the house and you're gonna be able to see that. My daughter calls it a baseline from foundation base, I guess. But I uh, just brush that out a lot. If you brush it all off, add a little back. That works. Eyeshadow is the same thing. Remember when you're doing your eyes, if you have those hooded eyes like so many of us do, uh, if you put darker in your crease and just a little barely up on the, uh, your, the, the bone right there, the socket, it will pull that in and make it look like it, well, it's very deceiving. You, don't, you just don't look like you have a hooded eye. As we age, so many of us, whether we've smoked or not, we have the lip lines above our lips. Our lips start to get smaller and we get those darn lip lines. I have never smoked a cigarette in my life. Never had any desire to. But you know what I did do? For as long as I can remember, I drink out of a straw 
every day. You use the same motions from drinking out of a straw as you do when you smoke. So I for sure have them. And as I've said, and I've said this before, my lips, with my face, my lips have always been small. But since I am going through this truly aging process, my lips are, my, my face is sagging, so my lip, top lip especially is turning under. And I need to wear something that is going to make my lips look a little bigger, number one, but make my teeth look whiter. And, um, you know, and it just balances out my face. And I have tried everything under the sun, and I keep going back to this. And that's the CoverGirl Outlast. This color is 559, and by the way, I'll list this below. 559, I've had some of you tell me that it, it's real gunky on your lips. I would challenge you to try it again and do it this way. What I do with this, and again, because my lips are small, uh, I don't have those great big lips, never did, never will, but I wipe all, as much as I can of the color off of this, and then I start, and I do a, a very light coat of this on my bottom lip, and then I do my top lip, but I make sure, and on this side of my lip is, is drooping more than this side. So I actually go barely outside of my lip line on this side. And then I go back, put a little bit more on after I've done one coat, one light coat, I put another coat on. And then I let it dry. And when it's dry, it's starting to pull and feel a little bit tight. And then this always comes with it. It's their lip balm, and I make sure I use this because I want to stay. Up. I want it to stay on. I go over this, and I always have one of these in my purse. Anytime my lips start to feel dry, I use this. I've used other lip balms and lip glosses on top of these, but I think this one must be formulated to work with it because it seems like the lipstick. Uh, stays on a whole lot longer when I use this. I mean, when I go to clean my face at night, I still have lips, I still have good traces of lipstick on using this. So if you have that same problem that I have, find you a color. They come in a bunch of colors. Find you a color. I, I have this one and another one that, and they're the main ones that I buy. I love it. I love it. Uh, my daughter in law gave me some Chanel's because she knew I liked those. And I, I don't even know if you can get these anymore, but they're very similar. They have, except that they're, a, uh, well, no, they're the doe foot. And, but the, the, what you put on is more like a gloss, it's a brush just clear gloss and I wear these from time to time not very often um, I sort of think these may no longer be available I've had these for two or three years and you can tell I haven't used them very much I just like that cover girl outlast but I will wear these from time to time and they stay on they they do they stay on pretty good I'm not sure they stay on any better than that CoverGirl Outlast, but I will tell you this, that Outlast is a whole lot cheaper than these are, a whole lot. If you're aging, one of the problems you're probably having too is the skin on your eyelids. Starts to get a little bit crepey, and it makes, number one, eyeshadow application a little bit more difficult, but also it, um, the eyeshadow doesn't seem to last as long on our eyes. And I generally use an eyeshadow base. If When I do a Get Ready With Me, if you don't see me use one, it's because I've probably already put it on. But my very favorite, and it's so inexpensive, is the Milani Eyeshadow Primer. I love this. I love it. 
It lasts forever. It uh, takes just the tiniest little bit and just pat it all over your eyelid and give it a minute or two to set up. And I think, I think you'll like your end result with your eyeshadows much, much better. So try that. I would say to find a hairstyle that's easy for you, that you like, and stick with it. Change it up for a special occasion maybe, but just stick with it. Also, keep your hands pretty. As we age, oh my gosh, as we age, so many of us start to have some arthritis in our hands and I think it makes us self-conscious. So, you know, I just think keeping your nails pretty, whether you choose to keep your nails short with nothing done to them, no polish or anything, just make sure that they're manicured well and that's something you can do yourself. Just, you know, keep them trimmed and your cuticles pushed back and, and wear lotion. If you're wearing polish, Make sure it's neat and changed when it needs to be changed. If you're wearing uh, the Kiss stick-ons like I wear, you know, you know how to take care of those. If you're going to the salon and having gels or acrylics put on, just keep those up to date too. Wear pretty rings and pretty bracelets. If we have these spots on our hands, my word, tell me why I have a spot, a big brown spot. Can you see it? Right there. For years, I drove in the car daily, and maybe, just maybe, sun was coming through, and that's a sun, from the sun right there. I'm sure it is. But if you have the spots, wear pretty rings and bracelets and watches, and just use lotions and, and, and take care of your hands like you do your face. I've said this so many times before, but when I do skincare, morning and night, whatever I put on my face goes on my hands. Whatever's left residue-wise on my, the palms of my hands goes, I do this, and as far up my arm as I can go with every single product. I never wipe my hands on a towel when I'm using skincare. It goes on my hands. And you know, for 78 years old, I think I have pretty good hands. I'm okay with them. I've got, you know, I've lost some elasticity and they're a little bony, but I can live with them. Hey, I have hands. I have them. So, yeah, take care of your hands. Just take care of your hands. And the next thing, and I've, I've listen, I have had some of you tell me that you do this now, and it just puts a big smile on my face. I don't know about you. You know, I'm married, Jim. I was single for 35 years. If you tell me something right now, okay, this is one of those questions that I want you to, I want you to tell me if you'd like to see a video on this. Uh, I was married when I was in my 20s, and was married for seven years, had Jennifer, and then divorced. And I was single for over 30 years. I never thought I would remarry. I was as happy as I could be single. I literally went years without a date. And I, in that time, I had a, a few serious relationships. A couple of times I could have gotten married and I chose not to. One of those times I actually had a ring on my finger and I broke it off. But anyway, I never thought I would remarry. Uh, I loved my life. And I have told this story before in a four part series on how I met Jim and after it had been up for a while, and I'm sure some of you saw all four of them, all four parts of it, because it was um, very, it was really well watched. It, it had a lot of views. But I took it down because I realized one day that I shared some really personal stuff about family members that I probably shouldn't have shared. So I just took them down. But 
if you would like for me to talk about that again, about uh, being single, what I learned, and and how I met Jim, and what made me decide to get married at such at 68 years old. If you would like to see another video on that, let me know in the comments. And if enough of you want to see it, I'll go ahead and make it again. But uh, yeah, let me know. Let me know what you think. But speaking of Jim, I don't know if you're married especially or have a significant other and they're a sports fan. Jim... If he's not on the golf course on a Saturday or a Sunday afternoon especially, he is watching it on television. He's watching golf or his new love is soccer. And he will have that TV on watching golf or soccer or some football. And I'm, you know, in the early days I would sit and watch with him and then I'm going, no, I don't do this. I would go in the bathroom, sit down at my counter where I put on my makeup every day, and I would play. I would play in my makeup. And I would try different looks. My mother, in my mother's day, they probably would call it primping. But I would try different things. I would try an eyeshadow look or an eye look. And if I didn't like it, I would clean my face and start all over. and Or just clean my eyes and start all over. Or I may do one eye one way, the other eye another way. See if I liked either one of them. I, would, I was always practicing, always trying new looks. And I bet many of you have done that too. But if you've never done that, even if you're not married, if you're single... Uh, do it. Just take an hour and play with your makeup. Grab your phone or your your tablet or your computer, your laptop, and set it there beside you and follow someone who is giving a tutorial on something that you want to learn or maybe a look, a technique or a look that you want to try. You know, just play. You never have to go out of the house. No one else ever has to see you. No one. I suspect that's what my mother was doing that morning. She was playing. She was trying a new look for her. And trust me when I tell you, when I've been in there playing before, whew, there have been some looks that I knew I couldn't go out in public looking like that, whether it was my face or my hair, or maybe even how I was dressed. I believe, I truly believe that we need to be exactly who we want to be. We need to look exactly the way we want to look. If we want to wear our hair parted down the middle, straight, glued straight down, that's severe, you know what? We should do it. If we want to line our eyes with black eyeliner around and around and around and around and wear blue eyeshadow, we should do it. If we want to wear the brightest, reddest lipstick or blue or purple, we should do it. If we're gray-headed and we want to dye our hair purple or orange or whatever, we should do it. We should be true to ourselves. Just be true to ourselves. I've told you this before, again, I keep saying that, but for those of you who may be new, I don't like it when someone, especially someone so much younger than I am, tells me how I'm supposed to look and what I'm supposed to wear. 
oh, well, that's not age appropriate. I can do what I want to do. If I have enough nerve to walk out of that front door, I can do what I want to do. And you can too. I've given you some tips today that things that work for me, they may not work for you. You may be saying, Patty, your lips are way too dark for your eyes. Because there was this thing going around about if you have dark eyes, you, you should have light lips, but vice versa. Listen, no. I'm going to have dark eyes if I want them, and I'm going to have dark lips if I want them. And you can too, or maybe not. It's up to you. It's up to me. So, you do you. That's the best advice I can give you. You do you. Don't let anyone tell you what you can wear or how you can look. We've paid our dues. We've been there. We've done that. For so many of us, we've had to, we've had to listen to what other people dictated. Oh, we worked in an office, so we had to wear a suit. Oh, if you're gonna do this, if you're gonna go there, you gotta look this way. I mean, I think it's a good thing that society has changed so much over the past few years. And I think too, as bad as this pandemic has been, I think that maybe one of the blessings in it is that for so many of us, we've decided what's really important in our lives. Maybe we're living a little bit more casual than we've ever lived. I know so many people who have chosen not to go back to work. They've chosen different lifestyles, even if it means sacrifices. But we can do what we want to do. If we're aging, we've reached this point in our lives where we can be us. We can be us. Okay, so really and truly, that's it. I, I hope, I hope that you will take a minute and write in the comments below any tips or any things that you do uh, or maybe that you've changed the way you used to do them or maybe your thoughts have changed on them. Put that in the comments below so that we can all read it. And, and those of you, uh, uh, you know, read the comments. Make sure you go down and read comments. I think you would be surprised if you typically don't read comments under a video. I think you would be surprised. Some pretty good suggestions, some pretty good ideas down there. Things that maybe we've never thought of. All right, that's it. That's it. Uh, know that I love you. Don't forget to go out and be kind. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. And I'll see you soon.